Hello and welcome to Self-Sufficient Conversations. I am your host, Natalie, and we will be talking with Mel from Back to the Simple Life. In this week's episode, in our podcast series, um, we will explore what self-sufficiency means to others. Self-sufficiency means something different to everyone. For me, I couldn't achieve self-sufficiency without incorporating foraged foods, bartered foods, or selling my excess to produce or selling my excess to pay for pantry staples that I couldn't produce myself. Can you explain what self-sufficiency means to you? Um, well, at the moment we have uh, quite a small garden, so uh, we're not exactly self-sufficient, but uh, we are growing uh, quite a lot of different uh, variety of food. Um, I guess if self-sufficiency is on a spectrum, we're um, you know, going along a little way. Um, definitely two years ago, I'd never grown much at all. So, um, learning along the way, um, and I guess with 2020, the way it's been and the shops, you know, not being able to rely on them, I guess all the time, um, it's been a really great learning curve of, you know, what can we do in our own backyard to think about, you know, growing our own food and, um, providing for our family, you know, and it's also a convenience thing having things in the backyard that you can just quickly grab and add to dinner. And so I guess um, where I am at the moment, we're um, sort of supplementing, I guess, our food from the garden. And um, uh, depending on the season, I can cross out things on my shopping list that I no longer have to buy from the supermarkets that I can provide from my garden. So, yeah. (laughs) Awesome. And what climate are you in? Uh, We're uh, temperate, cool temperate, I think it is. Yeah. I'm cool temperate as well, but it might be a little bit cooler (laughs) on the cool scale. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Do you find that you can grow much through winter? Um, well, where my garden is situated, it's probably not the best spot on my property to be. Mm -hmm. Uh, it gets a lot of winter shade. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've just been sort of, um, experimenting with things that do and don't grow in the winter time. And there's sort of certain sections that don't get any direct sunlight. So they're sort of, uh, yeah, but I experiment with using pots and moving them around, um, having them in the sunlight um, because this is our sort of side garden. Mm -hmm. Um, Out the back we've got a Labrador. So at the moment (laughs) that's sort of uh, (laughs) off uh, limits um, to be able to grow food. We have tried. uh, When he was a puppy we had the garden out the back and, yeah, it was a bit of a disaster. So at least I know that. This area is mine. (laughs) It's not going to get um, (laughs) dug up or anything. So, yeah. Uh, Yeah, so winter time. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we're in suburbia. I I grew Um, in my front garden and I couldn't grow in my backyard because we had a box up. Yeah. And you should just sleep on the veggies. Yeah. Yeah, so this is actually um, our clothesline. And um, all of this just used to be... um, like a, a gravel garden. Oh, wow. Uh, not a garden, gravel. Yeah. Uh, so none of this was here. Um, these are the two, sorry, <laughs> these are the two raised beds that we got. Um, so that was put in. But before, and then there's another side over here. Oh, awesome. Um, we put that in. Um, and then I've also sort of added around the back of the shed, nice. uh, which was more gravel garden. Yeah, and then we've sort of spilled out into the front as well, um, a little bit. So, awesome. <laughs> I'm taking over the house. <laughs> yeah, it looks beautiful. <laughs> I can. It's such a beautiful yeah, garden. It's very lush at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, before <laughs> when we moved in, uh, it was uh, I should put a photo up on Instagram. It was uh, just a wasteland, and okay. it wasn't very nice place to be, and it was just. I guess just the side of a house and, mm-hmm. you know, never been tended to. So um, because there's sort of a side gate there, we can lock the dog out. So yeah. <laughs> it's ideal for us at the moment. Yeah. yeah so nice. 
Yeah. Um, you mentioned um, before we jumped on here that you um, used to live in a unit before you moved to your home. Did you grow anything in your unit? Uh, so when you're talking about units, we live down like a block from the beach. So okay. uh, we were very lucky to be there. Um, so it was more location um, mm -hmm. and we just had, we didn't even have a garage. We didn't even have a parking space. Okay. Uh, it was just a two bedroom unit. Um, there, yeah, it was even dark. So we couldn't <laughs> even grow anything inside. And I guess at that stage it wasn't on my radar. You yeah. know, it was all about being near the beach and we didn't have children back then and mm. um yeah so once we moved to the house um I was like wow look at all this space <laughs> um yeah so we moved like out west so we could buy um, a place with a bit of space for the kids to grow up and um yeah we we were really crammed in that unit I yeah. think I had all I had was a piece lily okay inside and that nice. was the um some of my green thumb <laughs> that was all I could grow um, so you've I've never, never grown really... no before then like, that was four years ago so uh that was about that was all I was growing wow you've done uh, so I amazing when we first moved in oh, <laughs> I've taught myself from Instagram just following other people and yeah uh, if I don't know anything I either ask or um google it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and yeah uh it's funny because I guess if I saw where I was now when I first started I would never sort of believe all the things that I'm growing but yeah I just kind of go you know like what what's it matter if it doesn't if it doesn't work out I just yeah. give things a go yeah um and I guess because I follow a lot of gardening um accounts on instagram i get that inspiration and i say well these people can do it yeah. i'll give it a go yeah um if it doesn't work out for me then you know i can try again or if i don't like it i don't have to grow it again yeah but you know why not you know yeah. <laughs> give it a go and i see i see people growing things and i think oh wow that would be really amazing and um yeah i just try it I'm the same. Yeah, like you just may as well, yeah, may I, as well give it a go. I only grow, uh, I only follow gardening accounts on my Instagram. It's my only social media. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the inspiration that you get from that, finding out new varieties, pushing the boundaries yeah. on when you can sow and, um, you know, start things ahead of time. That's right. Reminders. Yeah. Um, and just seeing such beautiful gardens. Like when I first started here, my garden um, wasn't that beautiful. I had so much space, but I couldn't kind of make it beautiful as well. But seeing yeah. all these accounts where they incorporate flowers and veggies and I'm like, was really inspired to start growing flowers in my veggie beds. And it's made a huge difference yeah. to wanting to be there and enjoying the space and yeah, getting down there. Yeah, Just, that's right. Yeah. And I guess learning like, oh, is that, you can do that. Like, you know, oh, you can put lavender in your veggie patch and that's okay. Like, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea, you know, like yeah. I think um, this was my first, I really loved lavender and I had a yeah. memory of that at my, when I was growing up and yeah, mum had it at our front door and it was beautiful and I'm like, oh, I really would like to grow lavender. Just as I think that was like one of the first things I bought. Nice. And maybe tomatoes. <laughs> and just knowing that, like, you know, that you can just plug in things here and there. And yeah, um, I remember messaging someone, I think it was after my first summer and I was starting to um, follow lots of people with their gardening accounts and I messaged someone and I said, what's the go with sweet peas? Like, is there, like, something like because everyone was raving about them yeah. like, I don't I don't get it like what is it I've never experienced them before yeah and they're like oh no it's just like a beautiful flower to grow and the scent is amazing and I'm yeah. like oh okay I'll give that a go next season you know like, and I'm growing them for the first like, time I next season no idea. <laughs> for that same oh, reason because everyone yeah. grows sweet peas yeah. I'm like I don't really like them I don't know why people You're are like, growing what's them what's going on but I found yeah, some yeah. beautiful um like chocolatey lavendery ones I was like well they're pretty I'll give it a go <laughs> 
like um, things that I'd never heard of before. Like, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? I want to try, you know, I want to try that. So, yeah. Um, what was, what would be your favorite thing to grow? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what changes all the time. Um, I love last season, we love growing corn. Um, but we've kind of not been very successful. It's in amongst the sunflowers, but, yeah. uh, lots of our seeds got eaten this year. So we planted many many seeds but uh, we love I think I try to incorporate what the boys want as well um, trying to get them to eat their veggies and you know mm. <laughs> get them involved and um, so I guess my decisions of what I'm growing is based on what I want to grow yeah but also what's fun for them and yeah um, I don't know I guess I can't really make a decision on my favourite. <laughs> That's a That's bit okay. tricky. Um, but, you know, like um, I really love growing flowers but then also being able to come out here and, you know, a couple of weeks ago the boys were just picking blueberries or like now they come along after dinner and they um, – I'll just show you down here. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so down here we've got oh, all our strawberries. Wow. And the boys just come along and they pick, um, they come along and check when they arrive and just, I guess, incorporating them into some of the process um, and, you know, just watching. We've got some cucumbers here and Lovely. just watching the progress. And I've got my eldest on zucchini duty at the moment and they, <laughs> they grow so quick that they do. he's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I love seeing their excitement and, then they're spotting um, when the tomatoes are ripening. So I guess yeah. seeing them um, get so excited makes me, you know, want to do it more. And yeah. So I didn't really answer your question. But That's all right. Do you, do you find... Seeing, seeing the boys involved, it's really good, yeah. <laughs> do you find they've been eating more veggies now that you're growing them yourself? Because, like, my oldest would never yeah, eat my... carrots. <laughs> And then I grew carrots and he's yeah. like, these taste different to shop-bought carrots. I only like shop, I yeah. only like homegrown carrots now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, my oldest, I think he was probably, uh, so he's five now, he was probably the motivation behind it. Like he was very fussy. Mm -hmm. um, and my youngest, he's, you know, we've been growing, he's two now, so we've been growing all his life. <laughs> yeah. um, and he he will just try anything. He'll just pop anything in his mouth. Awesome. He's sort of learnt, learnt to know what, ta what a ripe strawberry tastes like and yeah. what an unripe strawberry and, you know, the nice. green ones we don't eat yet. We've got to wait. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think with my eldest, because he sees, you know, all these things happening in the garden and um, my youngest is just giving it a go and seeing, you know, how it goes I think and I mean they taste they always taste better right yeah totally <laughs> you grow your own food like the blueberries are not squishy and yeah. the raspberries and you know like and the strawberries actually so... have flavor <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and like they things last longer and yeah, yeah. it's um yeah I guess so it really helps them because they see that process and yeah um not everything, I guess, but like even just getting them involved in harvesting things and mm. um, just see, like pointing things out to them and seeing the changes. Mm. Um, one of our favourite things were are uh, the snap, oh, um, yes. snap flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, snap dragons. <laughs> um, my son, when we went, we went to the shop and I said, "Look, you can buy one plant." Mm -hmm. um, which I do every once in a while. You can choose. You can choose something, and that can be part of your garden, like part of your space. And yeah, yeah. So that's what he chose. And I mean, awesome. they were tiny little seedlings, and yeah. I'd never grown them before. Um, yeah. But yeah. So, and then um, yeah, lot, lots of little things like we got the passion fruit growing. Wow. And I sort of say to my son, you know, like you like passion fruit in your yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you can try, but you know, I guess 
if they're involved in the process and they're seeing it, um, you know, trying to break them down slowly. <laughs> yeah. I've never yeah. had success with yeah. passion fruit. So. I've tried so many times. Oh, really? So in many different locations, yeah. different houses, uh, even in Melbourne, I couldn't grow yeah. passion fruit to save my life. <laughs> but then someone like There's 20 minutes away something. from me here grow, has like so yeah. many passion fruits on her vine this year. No. Nah. There's always my something nemesis. that gets you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> And I think the last question that I want to ask you today is if someone's listening to this, and they've never grown anything and they want to start growing their own food, um, what would be your biggest tip um, to give them? Um, Just give it a go. Um, I think growing from uh, seedlings is easier. Yeah. So, um, but in the end, like, it is more expensive. But Mm. um, when I haven't grown something, I generally start off with a seedling yeah um because it's easier um it's sort of yeah do you have to be careful when you're separating them out that was my biggest thing at the start like yeah. I would rip them apart and <laughs> not know how to care for them and then they'd go limp and die and I'd be like well that was a waste of you know money. <laughs> um but yeah giving them a go when they're sort of I guess a bit more advanced yeah um and, you know, I have pretty much learnt most of the things that I know from following other accounts. So, yeah. um, you know, having that knowledge and connecting with other people who also grow things um, really helps to teach you. And yeah. um, I guess, yeah, just I uh, like give that attitude of if it doesn't work out, then that's okay. But yeah you know, let's see if this works, you know, awesome. <laughs> just give it a go, give it a try. Yeah. Because I guess if I look around, I would never have thought that I would be growing this many different types of things. Yeah. Um, and some things have not been successful. Other things I haven't enjoyed. Uh, mm-hmm. They've taken too long or they haven't thrived or I remember. <laughs> oh, and also make sure when you buy seedlings, <laughs> It's the right season for that particular food. <laughs> That's a good tip, especially some, for 2020. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, yeah. unfortunately, some of the nurseries out there and mm. the bigger shops uh, sell things that are out of season. That's right. I think I bought some, what was it? I think I bought some snow peas in November. Oh, wow. My yep. first year of growing. <laughs> Um, and out here, um, uh, we're sort of Southwestern Sydney, we get some really hot summer days and, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, they're obviously a winter vegetable, Yeah, but they were on sale. So I trusted where I was buying them from and yeah. thought, oh, okay, we can grow them <laughs> in the middle of summer. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't. They were just yeah. trying to make some money. Um, yeah. yeah. So make sure what you're growing is the right time of year because, yeah. I mean, they did take off a little bit and I was getting all excited, but then they withered and died and I thought yeah. I thought that that was me um, yeah. and I thought that I had done something wrong and it was something to do with my growing skills and, yeah. you know, oh, maybe I don't have a green thumb. Um, but, you know, everything was stacked against me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if I was, it was, yeah. So um, make sure you're growing in the right season. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just sort of, I guess, do your research, um, think about what you're growing and, um, what conditions it likes and Mm -hmm. how to nurture it, I guess. But in the end, sometimes you can overthink things. I just kind of plug things in the garden and see how (laughs) they go. (laughs) Um, if they thrive, then good. We'll save the seed. Um, if not, then that's okay. Yeah. No harm done. Yeah, Yeah, that's right. So. And I think that goes as well um, when you were saying about growing seasonally. Like if you are going to follow people for advice, um, you yeah. know, maybe try and find some people in your local area because, I mean, I, I follow yeah, people right. all around Australia, but even those in Sydney, they're planting tomatoes out a couple of months before me and they're harvesting tomatoes now and I'm only really starting to get little fruits on my, my bushes. So, yeah, so you're yeah. not discouraged or, you know, planting in the wrong seasons, even just finding locals that are, are doing what you're doing 
Yeah, that's right. And um, sort of following along them and asking, you know, you always ask questions or that's right. what are you growing right now and yeah, yeah. things like that. Um, because starting things in the middle of summer or something is not yeah. such a great idea. There's a bit of a process to it. And yeah. I guess the shops kind of try to convince you that it's okay. You can buy things now. Yeah. Um, just to make a buck, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, just give things a go. Um, see, you know, I guess a lot of people who I've spoken to like neighbors and that, like I've sort of started moving some of my things out the front, the blueberry yeah. bushes, um, I had in big pots over here and I ran out of room when I started my summer seedlings. Yeah. I had a whole section of like, <laughs> so I moved them out the front and then the neighbours were like, oh, wow, you're picking blueberries from a bush. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, just, yeah, uh, I think a few of them actually went out and bought some. And That's awesome. Um, giving that a go, <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, just to see what other people are growing around you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely. It definitely Just helps. give it a go. Um, I really love your monthly garden, gardening journals. I think they're really cute. Um, <laughs> and it's, if you don't follow Mel, it's where she, she posts this little video um, and she has something of everything that she's grown that month, um, which is really nice. And I think it would be awesome for people who live in your area um, to follow, follow along so they can be inspired and what to pop in the garden in that month. Yeah. Um, even if they go yeah. back in time, um, they can go back down the feed and kind of say, hey, this is August um, and this is something that I could be growing right now. Um, yeah. I started that for myself um, because I don't really like writing things down and yep. when I did write things down, I never looked at them again. So, yeah. Um, I think my first one was, I only started doing it, I think, October last year. Yeah. Um, so I just, I think, and it was only a photo. And I took a picture of everything, of one of everything that was producing in that month. So obviously nice. other things were growing but not producing anything. Yeah. Um, just as like a, a snapshot of what's happening. And it's quite funny now that I've come around 12 months um, yeah. since I first took that photo and every month I kind of do what's been happening so keeping track of the changes and when I got to October to compare to last year's October I yeah. was absolutely blown away at um, how far I'd come in 12 months and how confident I was and how many different varieties of things that I'd added within yeah. just 12 months of oh I'll give this a go and see something and go, I've never grown that. Like, let's yeah. put it in and um, and then, you know, it's added to my monthly yeah. <laughs> log. So That's it's awesome. more like a visual diary for myself, I guess, to yeah. see, you know, track um, what's happening this time um, in the year. Yeah. And sometimes I look back on it. Um, I think I've saved them all in my story highlights, but I look back and go, oh, you know, like I kind of think, oh, my tomatoes are taking a while, you know, and then I look back and go, oh, yeah, this time last year there was, you know, nothing there or something, you know, like just to compare. Yeah. So I guess that's my way of keeping a journal of what's happening Yeah. rather than writing things down and not looking at them again. But, yeah, um, it's really fun. Yeah, and it's also a bit of fun just to see, you know, <laughs> what I can grow each season and, Last summer was a bit of a shocker with all the yeah. smoke that we had from the bushfires. Yeah. So I think a lot was affected from that. And yeah, we were affected So it would be interesting to compare. Mm. Yeah, mm. I think Massively. everyone was. Yeah, even yeah. being so far away. Um, and we also had a really cold summer last year and quite a bit of rain, oh, okay. even though it was different, obviously, even just, yeah, you know, a yeah. state away, a thousand kilometres away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, you know, hardly any tomatoes. And I had like 100 tomato bushes. And I had wow. hardly any tomatoes ripen on the bush. And what did grow and was green, I had to bring inside to ripen. And I was ripening them all the way through yeah. to May. Um, yeah. It was, it was a really hard season. <laughs> yeah. And I found 
because it was only my second summer of growing, I was like all excited thinking, oh, yeah. here comes summer, you know, yeah. you to grow all this <laughs> stuff. And I couldn't even go outside comfortably. Like yep. it was, um, yeah, that smoke would get in. Not that, you know, we weren't ex- affected by the fires where we are, but um, mm. yeah, it was really horrible in terms of growing. Just the sunlight would not, it just wouldn't get down into yeah. the plants. And I yep. think, Everything was covered in like a dust and yeah, yeah. So I'm excited to see what this summer brings. Um, yeah, and it actually had a lot more rain this year. I was going to say it's another spanner in the works. We've got La Nina this year, so um, <laughs> down here it's super cloudy still, and we're getting yeah, so much rain, yeah. um, which is great yeah. because I don't have to water, but um, you're still getting the cooler days yeah. and the cloud cloud cover which um is affecting yeah. growth a little bit <laughs> but we're still yeah, getting sunny days so that's fine we, <laughs> yeah <laughs> every once in a while you get like a shocker of a heat wave and yeah. it'll be like I think last year we got one day it was like 47 degrees or something that's it was insane. just like oh my gosh <laughs> I've never like because I didn't grow up in this area we we grew up uh, near the coast so okay um it's really different like even though it's less than an hour away from where um I grew up at, and it's still in Sydney yeah um this area we tend to skip a lot of the rain like yeah. if Sydney gets rain we don't get it okay or we only get partial amounts so it's yeah. quite a dry area yeah um and yeah the winters are a lot colder and the summers are a lot hotter yeah wow well. uh, we don't have that sea um breeze that sort of yeah. keeps everything at a regular temperature so it sounds like um, you're in a bit yeah, of a rain shadow there. That yeah <laughs> a bit of a valley I think <laughs> yeah um, but yeah we got rain this morning so that's yeah. last night yeah so because uh, a lot of the time they um they predict rain so I go oh great I won't have to go out into the garden and yeah water it or get it done for me and then <laughs> The day goes past and I'm like, oh, my gosh, everything's so dry because yeah. my poor garden has been waiting and waiting and hasn't gotten anything. So, but, yeah. Um, did you find that you lost? Go and... Sorry. <laughs> um, did you find that you lost <laughs> anything on the 47-degree day? Did your garden struggle? Obviously, it would have been really um, wilted. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And we got a few um, hot days Um I think it was about a month ago here as well. Um, yeah, I've I've turned into a crazy lady and I bring out the umbrella. <laughs> oh, <cute. laughs> We've got an old umbrella that I keep in the garage and my husband is like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, uh, I have it on this side in the morning and then yeah. I move it over this side in the afternoon nice. um, because this side, this um, garden here, um, gets the western sun so yeah um yeah it gets really hot but um yeah so he calls me the crazy plant lady <laughs> but that's all right as yeah. long as it's not too windy because a yeah, lot of those right. heat wave days you get the wind as well so then I'm like oh the umbrella's gonna fly off <laughs> <laughs> that's something I need to think um, about this year is yeah. getting some shade for some of the more precious crops <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah not something I've ever done before um, but you notice the yeah. difference. Your tomato starts to cook. You get sunburn on your capsicums. Um, yeah. Yeah. I find most like pumpkins and zucchinis are fairly resilient, but I look forward to tomatoes every year because yeah. I don't buy any tomatoes. <gasps> and so I need to grow enough to eat and to preserve. And so if you're losing yeah. them in a crazy heat wave, um, it's really devastating if you put that much time and effort into growing it from seed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's um, and then you come out at the end of the day when it well, if it cools down, yeah, and you're kind of like, oh, hi, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looking at all the damage, yeah. Think, um, uh, the things that I grow in pots, I guess, going back to the beginner thing, yeah. Um, I used to grow a lot more in pots because I had we didn't have the space, like, I keep sort of digging out the gravel and putting yeah. in soil and you know, making more garden beds as we go along. But um, when I first started, it was mostly in pots and things dry out a lot quicker. So anything that's, um, I think over here we've got some hanging pots and um, 
they're they're the first ones to wilt on a really hot day yeah. because you know they they just can't retain the moisture and yeah um I guess that uh, if I've been you know at work and busy with the kids and things like that yeah that's my first indication of oh time to <laughs> water the garden yeah um but yeah preparing for a heat wave is tricky but mm. yeah especially as you said especially when you put so much effort into yeah. you know growing food is a process and yes <laughs> um you do if especially if you're starting from seed you do put a lot of time and effort into it and, yeah um, they're your little babies you know you don't want to see them <laughs> suffering <laughs> yeah do you grow most things from seed or are you still growing from seedlings or is it a mix um, I have started, obviously, as my confidence grows, I start yeah. um, growing more things from seed. I think majority of things I do try to start from seed. Yeah. Um, and I use seedlings from the shops as my backup if they yeah. don't work. So, yeah, um, yeah, I give things a go. Um, and then, yeah. It nice. just yeah. depends how, you know, some things just don't survive for me. Mm. Um, whoops, hang on. <laughs> I, um, I grew from losing, losing power for about um, yeah. eight years when we're in suburbia um, because yeah. I just couldn't grow from seed. And then we moved out here and because I've got such a big space, it's the size of a large urban block is my veggie patch. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just couldn't afford to buy seedlings to fill the space. So I had to really learn how to grow from seed. And now everything is grown yeah. from seed. But that's a huge journey to get to that space um, of being yeah. able to. It's not easy. Yeah, no, it's not easy at all. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah I, I would highly recommend beginners, like you said, um, to just buy seedlings. It's so much easier. Um, it's almost yeah. instant as well and um yeah you you're, you're a, buying time you're, yeah <laughs> you're buying the time that the, yeah. the nursery have you know <laughs> grown up the little seed and yeah you can just fast forward into going to plant yeah but yeah it does become <clears> expensive <throat> and that's sort of one of the things that drove me to starting from seed and just seeing whether or not I could do it yeah if I couldn't that was okay but I just thought I'd try yeah um and big and seeds are also, so much easier too Yes, yes. Larger, the larger the seed, the easier it is to keep alive. Um, but then also, like following people, I've learnt that if you then collect seed from the plants that you've grown in your garden, plants um, are more adapted to your climate, so That's they're right. more likely to succeed as yeah. well. So, um, you know, who knows where some of the seeds have come from? That's right. Um, yeah. And obviously, it, we, even within Australia, there's different climates where they've um adapted to so um knowing that if i choose my strongest plant and keep those seeds for next season and that and that in itself is a learning experience of how to collect seeds yeah you know seeing what other people do but then also googling when's the best time like even behind me here i've got some baby spinach yeah um that's going to seed yeah and just sort of thinking about how and when and yeah yeah getting myself organized and collecting awesome. them and and I, it's free you know like That's at right. the end of the day you're collecting stronger plants and yeah. um you're saving money as well so and you're being self-sufficient and yeah. you see seeds which is yeah, yeah that's for right. me that's something i need yeah. to step into because we are living a self-sufficient life i um i need to kind of think about yeah how self-sufficient am I if I'm still buying all this seed and can I produce any of that seed myself? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the same with composting. Like, yeah. I think when I first started filling one of our raised beds, I did the rookie era of buying those bags of soil. Yeah. <laughs> Going, oh, my gosh, this is so expensive. Yeah. And it's not as good <laughs> as what you can make I've yourself. <laughs> no, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and since then I've learnt, you know, the um, method of putting the, the logs or the sticks at the yes, bottom yep. and then building it up, chucking in food scraps as well and yep. building it up because, you know, some of the raised beds can be quite deep. And That's right, yeah. Um, I'm thinking, how do people afford to do this? This is really expensive. We've got yep. to go out and buy bags to fill them up. And yeah. Then, 
Um, we've got like our composting behind the shed now and um, yeah, like that's just food for the plants and that's right. I, and it's funny because I talk to my sons and they're like, oh, why are you doing this, mum? And I was saying, well, you know, that cardboard that we're ripping up and the egg cartons and the food scraps that we put in, like that's going to magically turn into soil. Yeah. And they're like, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, just seeing that and. Um, yeah that's awesome seeing that process and exposing that to them I think is a big drive driving factor for me yeah um seeing where food comes from because yeah um I'm a teacher and I know that a lot of kids are not exposed to that at all and they have no idea um one of the subjects in science I taught was about the life cycle of plants and animals and bringing in a tomato and going all right we're going to chop it open and we're going to take these seeds and we're going to put them in the soil (laughs) and they're like what (laughs) you know like we grew (laughs) these um these plants from it and I'm like that's from the tomato that I was eating on my sandwich that day you know (laughs) like just that's phenomenal like their eyes are open yeah (laughs) and then they're looking I think it was their fruit bag at the time as well and I said look around you've got an apple yeah what's inside of an apple and yeah yeah like um just exposing them to that because I think a lot of people have sort of lost touch with where yeah. food comes from and definitely I think that's really important that's and, a you know, really awesome teaching point. myself yeah. as well yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um things just don't come in packages from the supermarket like yeah you know there's a process behind it and yeah and there's seasons um, too which is something that I've had to learn yeah. to deal with is I can't eat strawberries yeah. um, 12 months of the year because they don't grow here 12 months of the year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah but it's something we're yeah. so used to in Australia, having tomatoes and zucchini and, and, and strawberries 12 months of the year when it's just not how it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having access to whatever you want, whenever you want. Yeah. Um, but then knowing, like when you sort of look into how things uh brought to the supermarket like that and yeah. how the tomatoes have no flavor it's because they're picked so early and they're yeah. transported all the way you know yeah um uh, and that's the reason why they taste awful sometimes yeah. <laughs> um <That's right. laughs> compared to uh, there's nothing compared to when you first taste um something that you've never grown before yeah and then you compare it to your experience of when you know most of the time you've just eaten it from the supermarket shelves and yeah going oh my god there's <laughs> like a whole world opened up to you of is this the way that food is meant to taste and yeah um yeah just like sort of looking at what what do I have in my kitchen that I yeah. could possibly replace with what I'm doing at home. Yeah. Um, like even herbs, they're nice and yeah. easy to grow. And yeah, that's right. Um, putting, putting some oregano in your spaghetti or yeah. some rosemary or, you know, just yeah. going. <laughs> I, sometimes I walk along the supermarket and I look at the packets of herbs or mm. things and I go, oh, so disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> And they're so expensive as well. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm and if you were to get like, oh. coriander, for example, it always looks foul in those plastic sleeves. Yeah, it's always it rotting. Yeah. And yeah, when yeah. you compare that to just walking out and having this lush, yeah, yeah, rub. <laughs> or you have to buy it like you have to buy big bunches of it at a time right. and then you're like, I don't use all of this. Yeah. Um, I only need a that spring. That reminds me. Of, um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I bought some spring onions from the supermarket and I yeah. cut cut them down and they still had some roots and I regrew them. Nice. And two years on, they're still going. And that's wow. the thing. You can just pick <laughs> one little bit. And yeah. You just pick it off and then you've got that for dinner and, yeah, you know, like... I'm thinking, how much did I pay for that bunch of um, yeah. spring onions? And here we are still going two years later. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just come out and take what you need and then leave the rest. And yep. um, it's so fresh. And um, 
yeah, like also looking at the sprays that are put on things and yeah. just looking into the damage that it's doing to us. And, yeah, you know, not everyone can buy organic, so it is really yeah. hard. And looking at, well, you know, when I'm picking all my baby spinach or mm. things like that, I'm not having to rely on the supermarkets. And, you know, when you wash all your fruit and you think, oh, yeah. what is in this? Like I, yeah. I'm worried that I'm putting poison you know literally putting poison into ourselves yeah um if i can replace some of that and you know looking at um some of the types of foods that absorb chemicals a lot more yeah i think they call it the dirty dozen or That's something right. yeah thinking, the dirty dozen and the clean you know, maybe i can yeah <laughs> maybe i can look at growing some of them and replacing that yeah that's um, awesome as I said, it's a spectrum. You can't do yeah. everything all at That's once. Right. And if you try to do everything all at once, mm-hmm. you'll get overwhelmed and yeah. you'll probably fail. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people say, you know, oh, you either have a green thumb or you don't. Yeah. Oh, I don't believe that. Like, I didn't have a green thumb and I, I'm, because I'd never had experience in growing anything. And yeah. I had, you know, like my grandmother and my mother grew bits and pieces more my grandmother yeah um so I had like a bit of a memory from that but um yeah just giving things a go one step at a time like if you look at someone else's garden and you try to copy that you would get overwhelmed yeah um, yeah I agree If I started with this amount of food, I would be so overwhelmed. With <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know what to do and how to manage it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just take baby steps, I guess. Yeah, I think that's awesome um, advice. And the more confident. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with us. I've had a ball talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Really Thank you. Two years. You're, you're such a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that inspires some people and where they can be if they just start, like you said, just start with one thing or a couple of things. Um, yeah. They could be producing, you know, just even something a day to put in their meal, um, whether that's a herb yeah, that's or right. a green or, yeah. Um, I think it's really cool. Uh, and I will Thank be you. sure to leave all your links um, down below, your Instagram account, so people can come and follow you. Um, and be inspired and hopefully yeah there's someone local <laughs> to you that can learn what to grow when and what grows well in what months <laughs> great well thanks so much it's My been pleasure. lovely talking to you 